Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this window. And I'm painting one side of it with, um, with a product called Boss. That's a Dixie Belle product uh, that just is a stain blocker. So it will keep this stain from coming through to my paint. So I'm going to give this one coat of this and let it dry well. And then I'm going to give it two coats of the color Buttercream. And then once I let that dry, then uh, I'm going to put a clear sealer on it and uh, just to protect the paint. And now I'm working from the back side of the window and I'm trying to uh, create kind of a backdrop for my art because this, this window is going to be kind of layered. So I'm going to start with covering it with some music sheets and I'm not gluing anything down yet because... Like I said, I'm working from the back, and um, I just want to uh, go ahead and get this later, layered, and then I'll flip it over and uh, let that show from the front. So I'm going to put this music on here, and, um, and then I'm going to layer some uh, paper doilies just to give it some more dimension. And as it turns out, the paper doilies really didn't show well uh, because um, the last layer that I'm putting on this is a, um, a decorative tissue uh, for gift bags. And, um, and I just, I kind of wanted to... Uh, warm the background up with that but i still wanted the music sheets to show through so uh the music sheets did but um but the um but the uh doilies did not so now i'm kind of flipping it over just to see what that's going to look like from that side and um like I said, I put these doilies on here and just kind of randomly place parts of the doilies. Uh, but that was a step that I could have done without because, like I said, it just really didn't show up enough. So for today's items, uh, I'm working with, uh, with a transfer called um, Vintage Post. And that's one uh, that it's a newer one from Dixie Belle. And I really like the look of it, uh, but it has a lot of different uh, black and white, more French country um, transfers. So all these items are going to have French country transfers on them. So here I am just cutting this tissue wrap uh, and then um, I'll decoupage that on the front of this. And then I'll flip that over and glue it in. And then after I have my backdrop ready and secured into the window, then I'm going to put the transfers um, on the window itself. So this will be behind the window and then the transfers will be on the window. And these are some of my favorites from Dixie Belle. Um, but like I said, I just transfer them onto the front of this and I just kind of pick some that I like and uh, kind of place them the way I like them and um, and that will give this window a layered look but still keep a very neutral look now you could you you could do some version of this if you don't have the transfers uh, or even if you don't have the tissue wrap or music sheets um, you could just put book pages behind this and um and then instead of using transfers maybe use some stencil and stencil it onto the glass and a tip that i got from a viewer was to when you're stenciling um and you're not going to be able to or you don't want to have to seal that chalk paint from the stencil uh, add some top coat in with your chalk paint and i thought that was a great tip and i've been doing it since she since you mentioned that and um, it works out really well so if you decide to do stencils versus the the transfers then like i said uh, just add a little top coat in with your paint but i like the layered look that it gives this window and i didn't mention that i put one of those transfers on the actual 
um, window itself and then I put um, a stamp a script stamp on on other parts of it um, and then I had this little shoe box and I uh, had taken the top off of it but when I did the little thing that goes on the top I guess that you rest your shoe on and taken that off because I wanted to just make this a storage box instead and when I did it cracked the top but um, that's why this is going to be a good piece to put um, a transfer on uh, but just painting a couple coats of the color buttercream uh, hid that crack really well and then, like I said, the extra layering of the transfer also hid that even more. And then another color that I'm using in this vignette is Farmhouse Green. And so I'm just putting um, two coats of Farmhouse Green inside the box because the box had some, some pretty bad, I almost looked like a mildew stain on the inside. So I just give this two coats on the inside of this green and then I go back over the lip and the top with the white. And I didn't tape anything off here. I was just extra careful. And then like I said, I chose another transfer to go on this one. So I just cut that one off and transfer it. I decided to transfer it to the front and let it kind of wrap around the top somewhat. And I really love how this one turned out. I think it made a really big difference in, in this piece. And then I thrifted some buckets and um, this was one of them. And I'm going to paint this one, uh, two coats of the same color uh, farmhouse green. And I didn't bother with doing a slick stick on this because uh, once I let it dry, it'll stick well to this metal. So like I said, I give this two coats of the color farmhouse green. And I didn't paint the inside because I want to keep it usable. So um, like I said, two coats of the color farmhouse green. And then uh, I'm going to be putting a stencil on, or not a stencil, a... Um, transfer on this one also from the same set now some people say that you should put a top coat on before you put your um, transfer on uh, but especially on metal if I let it dry really well first then I don't have any problem with the stencil pulling the paint away so um, I, I like to do this first um, because um, it, it just seems like it does better for me. So once I get this on, I'm planning on uh, using some, um, some Van Dyke Brown glaze on this to warm this color up because I do like the farmhouse green, but in this particular vignette, I don't want that crisp green. I would prefer that it be warmed up. So um, another tip that I got from a viewer was uh, to um, keep some clear wax handy when you're putting on your glazes or your or your antiquing wax um, because clear wax will help remove if you if you can't get enough of it off it does if it's darker than you want it just put some immediately put some clear wax on there and it'll help pull some of that off and I found that tip to be uh, really helpful so that's all I'm doing to this item and and then I have one more item that I'm going to be doing before we switch over to Christmas gear and it's going to be this little riser and some would call this a stool but um, clearly it's not large enough or sturdy enough to sit on so I think that I, I thrifted several of these uh, new because they were um, unfinished and they just look like they were brand new so I, I thrifted several of these because I always like to have items that uh, I can use as risers uh, so I can lift some of my vignette up and um, and I'm starting here with um, two coats of the farmhouse green on this on the seat 
But then on the legs, I'm going to do two coats of the color buttercream. And then uh, I'm going to be uh, putting a transfer on this one also. And I'm also going to be uh, using some brown glaze on the seat of this one, but not on the legs. So on the legs, I just finish it off with some clear wax. And now I'm using one of the uh, stencils or one of the transfers from that same set here and applying it to the center because I didn't find one that just really fit the stool well. So I decided that I'm going to have to do some layering here. So I have um, a black and white rose from um, the Magnolia set from Dixie Belle. So I'm going to put that on one side and then on the other side. I had another one, but it was too large. Uh, so on, on the other side, I'm just going to use a wooden stamp. And as it turns out, uh, this, this stamp didn't stamp that clear. Uh, but it was clear enough. It just kind of gave it more of a warm, worn look. And, you know, when you're using a wooden stamp versus a clear stamp, you can't really press that middle down. I tried, but there's just no way. So it was okay with me that it just kind of got this worn look. And then, like I said, I go over that with a coat of the clear wax or the um, brown glaze. And then there is my are all my items finished. And then this is the, the part of the video where if you're not ready for Christmas decor, uh, then you can go ahead and turn me off. And uh, we're going to do a couple of ornaments. I did mention here that I did go back with my sander and distress all my items except for the, the bucket. Okay, so... Um, here is what the transfers come in, and this is another transfer set, but it's the same uh, kind of container. Um, so I just took it outside and cut it straight in half. I didn't measure it because these don't have to be exact, but I cut them in half. And then so each cap, each side will have one cap, and that will be the bottom of my ornament. And this ornament is going to be a birdhouse. And I'm using some party hats here. And um, the party hat will be, uh, will be the roof to my birdhouse. So, um, as you can see, it just fits right over that. But it's too large. So, I'm going to cut uh, maybe an inch or two off the bottom. And uh, that will make this fit perfectly. I loved coming up with something to do with these containers because they're real good and sturdy. And uh, so I hate to throw them out. Uh, and they're going to make a really sturdy little birdhouse ornament. Now, um, I should have thought before I added my hats to uh, to the tube or the roof to the birdhouse, I should have thought and uh, went ahead and added my hanger uh, because I could have came up through that hole and I could have tied a loop in my fabric and put it up through that hole and let the knot catch it. Uh, but I didn't think of that. I was just kind of creating as I went. and um, But it, it's not a problem because I find a very easy way to fix that. So I'm adding some baking soda to just some regular craft paint here. Some just regular white craft paint. And I'm going to paint uh, these and I'm going to give them some texture. So I just paint the entire piece, uh, top and bottom with um with two coats of this textured paint one almost covered it with this texture on it but uh, i ended up having to do two just to make sure and now i'm going to use this tim holtz uh aviary i think it's called and it comes in a roll here but it's decoupage paper so um that almost fits this. I do have to trim it down a little bit. 
but it has birds on it, so I thought that was appropriate for this little birdhouse. So I'm just going to um, decoupage this on. I just cut enough to wrap around this, and then I decoupage this onto the birdhouse. And then I can just kind of poke out that hole, which I, men I didn't mention that I just took a drill bit and drilled that hole in the front. Now, if you don't want to go through all that, then uh, you can always just draw your or paint your hole on it, or you could, uh, you know, it's not really going to be used. So you could you could add something to this to mimic a hole. Uh, you could even glue a large button on it or a piece of fabric in the shape of a hole. Um, but I just, it was easy for me just to get out my drill bit and drill a hole in this. So, like I said, I'm just going to drill right over, I mean, I'm just going to decoupage right over the top of that hole and then, then just take my finger and poke it back inside. And then the way I fixed, uh, or made a hanger on it was, uh, I just took a little eye hook and just screwed that right down in the top and i didn't really have to screw it because um you've got that tiny little hole there and so to make sure that that eye hook didn't come out before i put it down in there i put a a, a generous amount of hot glue down inside there and then just kind of stuck that little eye hook down in there and let it dry well as you can see i started to screw it but it went straight through so I added a little hot glue to make sure that that, that stayed well. And now I'm adding a, a little a piece of a tiny, um, looks like a tiny dowel. Actually, it's a little skewer stick, and I cut the end of the skewer stick off and, uh, and just glued that into the hole there, and that will be my little perch for the bird. And now it's just time for some extra embellishments. So I just add some uh, buttons and little pieces of lace and, um, and just kind of dress it up. So uh, I won't talk through this. I'll just let you watch.
and now I'm just painting on some glue here and there and um, and I'm going to be adding some opal uh, or iridescent glitter um, so I just kind of concentrate more there around the front and around the top uh, but just very lightly on other areas of the birdhouse And for the next one, I decoupaged one layer of a, a napkin as my base on this one, and then I'll dress it up also. And I did mention that for both of these, I tie a strip of fabric in the top uh, to through that little eye hook to use as the hanger.
then I found a little earring that I could use for my perch. So I'm just taking this little earring apart. If you can't find something, just look at uh, just look at different items that you can make an unusual perch out of. This one just happened to work out just fine, but you could use a straight pin and just put you some beads on it. Uh, but then I just kind of uh, made a little hole with an exacto knife. Maybe not the best tool for that. Uh, but I just made a little starter hole. And then I just hot glued that in. And I thought that made a really shabby little uh, perch for this little birdhouse. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.